we're live. What is going on, guys? My name is Chris, and welcome to the Elder Scrolls Online weekly live stream that we do here on twitch.tv slash stratix. To my right is my buddy, my cousin, my partner in crime, Dan. Say hi, Dan. Hello there. And this week, we're actually going to be giving away... And now, if you're watching this on our channel, it's already been done. But this week in the stream, we're going to be giving away Daisy Standalone to a random viewer and follower. So make sure you're here at the end of the stream uh, for a chance to win. No, you can't win it. Leave us alone. No. No. Anyway. So, this week we're going to be talking about the keeps in PvP in Elder Scrolls Online. We're going to be talking about some questions that have been going around Reddit and other forum sites. We're going to get questions from you guys. We're going to pick the winner. And then we're going to thank everybody because we love you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Dan. Um... What weekly kind of news did we get about keeps this week? That is weekly. Keeps, well, basically. Um, like, how do? Uh, first off, let's start off with how how will keeps look like? What kind of terrain and environment will keeps have? I was gonna say we will show you, but I guess we'll link it below. Yeah. Um, but basically, they have released that. Yeah, just the different types of keeps and how they'll look different and. Really, they kind of gave us those. I'm pretty sure there's some like blueprints in there at one point. Oh, uh, yeah, on the screen now, if you're watching this on our channel, it'll be Sets blueprints. Of scale and things like that, and why they'll be different, and um, yeah, just an overall real in depth scene. Yeah, of, and uh, I'm quoting them here saying, they're saying, not every keep is exactly the same. Um, for real time examples, or sorry, and these real time examples help us create buildings with some variety to their floor planes. Uh, much like their terrain. So it's going to be like each keep won't look the same. They'll be different to the terrain, they'll be different to the environment. If you've got a keep in the middle of a woods, of course you'll have wooden floors. If you've got a keep in the middle of a city, it's going to have cobblestone floors, right? Yeah. So well, using the sandbox system, they're going to kind of design it to the way that it'll adapt to its environment. That's kind of what uh, they were saying. And they're, they've been saying you'll need to know what kind of uh, fortifications you're growing up against to kind of plan your approach. So if you're yeah, growing things up. Are like the different shapes of entrances, ways in, how the fortresses are going to be built up above it, they might have different, that's, that might depend on how they're actually going to defend your keep, because you might be able to, I don't know, drop things or pour things from above, yeah, or, like but some be, of them might not well have that option. As well as using assault siege weapons, you also be able to use siege weapons to defend yourself, so there is an upside to that. And by defending yourself, it doesn't mean we're going to have a ram on the inside to hit the ram on the outside out, it's, they're going to be different, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you claim keeps in uh, Elder Scrolls Online, Dan? That was one of the questions that, um, not one of the questions, but one of the things they kind of emphasized in the article that they released. Shall I just quote them or shall I uh, discuss Oh yeah, quote them, you might as well, and then just okay, kind of throw so you on the I'll just read from what we've got here. It says, we also had to decide how attackers would claim a keep. We considered having a powerful NPC that invades those would need to defeat, but found that this took focus away from fighting enemy players. The assailants would group up and rush the NPC, sometimes foregoing combat with other players in a mad dash to kill the keep's lord and gain control. Now I'm going to stop here. This reminds me of similar MMOs where basically um, it was... Oh, I don't like to always reference WoW, but things like Altric Valley, wasn't it Chris? Uh, yeah, Altric Valley, the one where, where you have certain to... certain keeps that you couldn't get back, but basically there was bosses in there and you would just run to it, group up, and yeah, just exactly. gank it and then run on to the next one. And there would be no incentive to go and have a massive fight in the middle. Yeah, Like exactly. you would just I have mean, people shouting, be... like, why would you fight in the middle? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like you're going to have to play uh, uh, tactically to actually win PvP. Yeah, so, and hopefully this will explain why. It says a few iterations later, we came to our current system where the attacker needs to bust into the keep and occupy two flagged locations, not just one, for a period of time to gain control, all the while facing down the defenders trying to drive them out. Yeah, I mean, so, facing up defenders is probably another word, it's just another word for defending, so. Yeah, now, do you know how they of... say your keep's lords? Do you reckon that'll be defended by NPCs as well? I know in Guild Wars. That um, I know that Guild Wars where if you go in and you take the keep, there's also the keep lord, and then there's the NPCs doing the keep lord. Now the NPCs were doing nothing, but you reckon there's um, some sort of NPC leading up to it. Now this is a bad example, but you reckon it'll be like a uh, a kind of a 
A raid, a mini, mini, tiny raid. Do you reckon it'll be a mini, tiny raid? Um, what, where are you? You're not referencing. No, I'm not just... referencing anything. This is just coming off the top of my head, dude. Well, it says that they're not going to have a keep lord. That's that's what it says. Oh. They're not having it because the problem would be it. Oh, takes I read focus. it wrong. My bad, guys. Yeah. So basically, the whole point is they don't want to have this because otherwise it would take away the incentive of. PvP, they want you fighting each other, not NPCs the whole time. Oh, okay. like they will have okay, NPCs in there to help you, and these NPCs will get weaker, depending on how you defend your keep, which we'll discuss later on to do with resources and such. But they don't want a big NPC in there because it draws away from the PvP elements and forces you to PvE. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't want to say, oh, we need a so tank to go take over this keep. made it um, almost a dual capture the flag, and from what I gather in it, You'll need to keep both at the same time. You can't cap one, leave it, and then go get another one. You have to have them both yeah. during your siege of this keep. Now, the reason I thought that uh, when you were mentioning keep lords that there would be one is because the next topic here is defending keeps with NPCs. Do you want to read off that and give our viewers a little bit of uh, insight of what um, means? Okay, so we'll go straight into this. They've quoted here that we've decided that we'd need NPC guards to help provide a minimum defense. They aren't unnecessarily powerful but they can deter small groups for from easily seizing a keep. The guards appear once a keep is claimed which has the added benefit of giving the victorious assault party some backup and a chance to rest just a bit, balancing their health and damage along with the strength of the walls and doors continuing to be adjusted through testing. So do you know how they say balancing their health and damage along with the strength of the walls and doors? What do you reckon that means? Um, I think this might take reference to the resources that keep a uh, keep going. So, for example, that's all dependent on the outer resources such as farms and I think villages and things like this. I can't remember the exact things, but basically yeah. what it'll mean is as your doors, basically if you have all the resources, your doors are a lot stronger because you have the resources to make them. And things like, if you take out like a farm, I think is definitely one of them. It means yeah. there would be a food resource which would make the guards weaker because obviously they're not being fed well and things like this. So they're not like um, powerful enough that one will take out a group of people. But I think it might be like a one-on-one -on -one situation would still be a good yeah, fight. Exactly. So therefore to take it you would need equal to the amount of guards there are. Or to just play well and pick them off one by one. Yeah, I mean, I reckon that stealth will actually play a major role because they'll probably say, hey guys, we need someone to go in and get rid of this guard so we don't get detected or so no one notices, you know, that kind of thing. But then you've got the problem, I don't think yeah. they're going to have entrances. I don't. Th I think you will have to smash your door down to get in there. Oh, I know, I know that. But whereas, like, um, when... Oh, sorry, now I'm getting this all mixed up. Let's say um, you're going to get a resource for the keep. That's obviously going to be defended, right? And it's going to be alerted when you attack. Like, you know what I mean? Um, oh, so you're talking about resources, you're not talking about... Yeah, yeah. Um, like, you know, I reckon that stealths will have to go in and take out people one by one. But I don't think that would be possible because you would have to one... It's not like Assassin's Creed where you can assassinate someone. They're not that weak. Uh, I suppose. But, Hold yeah, on, the... someone's... Uh, we just got a... Some dude says side bomb. The Twitch chat. Thanks, Sai, I guess. <laughs> what is what is a cyber? Uh, some dude from the Twitch channel sent us sending people over. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, well, cool. So basically, yeah, the resources will be protected by a smaller group of NPCs and apparently capturable by about a group of five, but also defended, defendable yeah. by a group of five. So this is just one of the many ways they want to make it so that your one-on-one -on -one fighting will be based during traveling and things like that if you come across people. Your smaller groups will be for resources, keeps larger scale, and then obviously exactly. the Cyrodiil for almost epic raid war style. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, they, that as much information as they have released on keeps, that is actually all of it, isn't it? Besides the blueprints and stuff, which you can see on our video uh, now if you're watching it on our channel. Um, um, they yeah. also, I got some questions from some fan sites and Reddit that, uh, questions from Reddit and other fan sites. So, uh, one of the questions that actually intrigued me was, uh, I don't know who it's from, but they said they just left it anonymous. It was, uh, I haven't had a chance to experience any PvP during the beta, but I'm in love with the combat system of the game. How much of PvP combat is going to be based on skill? Timing dodges, blocks, attacks, 
skills and power attacks against other real players seem to be very exciting and engaging. So, do you want to give us your little insight to that, Dan, or do you want to kind of quote what they said? You can throw whatever you want. Um, I don't want to quote what they said. I want to answer ourselves. Go for it. But, Go um, for it first of all, you shouldn't be telling people you've played it. Um, <laughs> that's against NDA. So, be careful there, my man. Um, but I'm sure they won't track you down because you haven't left your name and they're not that yeah. bothered. But anyway, basically, I think a lot of it will be dependent on skill. Um, timing of dodges will be important due to the... Um, real-time sense of the combat. Um, the balancing of the game, from what I can see throughout skills so far, is quite important. Even the way of balancing stealth, so that if you are stealthing, it's going to take up your stamina. So you might get a good first hit off, but you might not be able to get more out. Exactly. So I and think that, that comes into one of our last weekly where we talked about stealth. You're going to have to time stealth right. You're going to have to use stamina correctly with stealth. It's yeah, not going to be a thing where you can go in and just go... Stun, 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 Things like blocking are going to obviously require stamina, which means that basically you're going to have to time your block right. When would it be worth blocking yeah. an attack? Unless they're putting out something major, was it worth not being able to have more stamina and things like this? And movement is going to be very key in this due to the fact that um, melee is soft targeting, but it still means that if you step back just a second before they're charging up a heavy attack, that means you're going to dodge that step back yeah, like in. If, uh, it's, it's, if you Almost hold... like you're in a boxing ring when yeah. it comes to melee combat. If they hold down the button, it obviously does a stronger attack, but you can obviously see that coming and you could block or you yeah, can get exactly. out of the way. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's going to help to not have lag. Yeah, Because, exactly. I mean, even if you lag out on other games that aren't, like... I say aren't real-time, you know what I mean? Like, certain games where you're kind of just spamming buttons. Yeah, uh, it's, I understand I, that. Because most games don't have dodging, or most older MMOs don't have dodging. Yeah, because, and... I mean, as successful... Now, I hate comparing this game to WoW, but as successful as WoW, it doesn't have a dodge system. It it has a dodge system where you have the you have an ability to dodge, but you can actually press a button to roll yeah, out Yeah, it's way. not about your movement. Well, it is, but it's not about, like... You can move away, but there's no, like, extra push. Like, there's no extra... A sprint button that takes up some of your resource for swing because you use stamina and things like this. Yeah, I think that because every way of evading attacks takes up the same resources as it would be as putting out attacks, you've really got to think about is it worth dodging this? Should I just take the hit and then use that same stamina to hit him back just as hard? And things like this, um, it's going to make for really interesting fights and Later on in the game, you the really skillful players will stand out. Yeah, and I mean, as you you basically just taking the words out of my mouth, it's just skill over everything. Not skill over everything, but skillful players, you still have that bit of. I time. mean, I don't think that the actual skills you possess will make too much of a difference. Um, they will help a bit. They will let you play how you want to. That's that's the only difference they're really going to make. They're going to let you play the style you want to. But I don't think you're going to have the problem with overpowering of skills and such. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the next so. bit of topic is about kind of player interaction. Uh, I'm going to quote the question. You can just throw the answer out. Uh, sure. Player interaction. Their one or our one uh, or both? Both. Okay, I'll read through what I'm saying. It. Um, player interaction is very important in any MMO. With this in mind, will the players and the opposing teams be able to communicate with one another? The WoW method, for example, of limiting communication between teams makes their PvP a little, you know, shallow and artificial. So they're basically saying, is there any way that the Aldemiri Dominion could talk to the Ebonhead Pack in AV? Okay, just because I'm not entirely sure, I'm going to read out their, their answer first. But players from each alliance within Cyrodiil can still use emotes and see the other players doing them for sure. Their comprehension of public messages, however, between players will be blocked between alliances. It just gets flat out suppressed and enemy alliances don't see public messages or zone chat from the enemy. It's just, so yeah, go on. this basically means that I guess if you start raging in a fight, um, they're not going to be able to see it. But from what I do know, um, guilds can cross alliance so you can communicate through guild chat. But obviously, do you reckon be that, that's just brought in the implementation of spies? Dude. <laughs> exactly. Like, we might have some spies, they might have some spies, or you could be like, okay, um, we're going to organize a guild fight, we're going to go out to this area, 
where it's normally there's nothing going on and we're going to have a 10v10 and it'll be quite fun. Exactly. Which is, which I've just thought of right now, which would be quite cool. You could have like organized fights. <laughs> mm-hmm. So screw arena, we have organized ones out in the middle of nowhere. It's like, all right, you meet our guild in the middle, we'll bring our shot, our, our sorcerer, bring your dead knight, our dragon knight. <laughs> we'll just circle around and be like, fight. Du, 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 du. It's like that scene from the, uh, the cable guy when it's when they have the two sticks and like dun, 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 dun. I have no idea. anyway anyway um the next question here is uh about keeps in Cyrodiil uh it has been said that guilds can claim ownership for a keep among those owned by their alliance so how do you claim ownership and can guild own several keeps slash dependencies or only one okay well I just got lost because Chris so, asked the question but anyway um has been said that guilds can claim ownership Sorry, one second, I'm just reading myself. Okay, so we're going to go with their answer and then I'll expand on it. So, guilds can claim one keep, farm, lumber mill, or mine. So, like I said earlier, resources are farms, lumber mill, and mine, which is good because I forgot what they were um, at a time. Only one, not one each. Claiming is simply done by taking the quartermaster at those locations. So, this is new for me. I didn't know this. Um, yeah, go on. Basically, for a guild to claim a keep, I think literally a guild has to either be the majority of the people claiming the keep, mm-hmm. or there has to be a certain number of guildies there um, to do it. So, for resources, this would be quite easy because, like I said earlier, you only need like five to ten people to claim a resource, and that resource would then belong to the guild, yeah. which would give your guild special. Buffs and things Benefits throughout to the, the game. That you would have, yeah. And I've heard that if your guild can capture a keep, you have a guild hall in the keep, which would then belong to you, which is quite cool. What do you reckon will happen in the guild hall? Any speculations or theories? Um, heavy drinking, um, banter, things like that. Okay. And uh, one of the last question that we have written down here is: um, Are you going to make sure that AOE skills will be strong enough to help small and coordinated groups? Fend off larger and less organized groups. That would be totally the B wheels. I know and love if so. Nice question. Nice, um, nice wording of the question there. Well, they've obviously got to make sure that they're not overpowered in a sense. But yeah. I like his thinking in the sense that an organized smaller group should be able to take out a bunch of random people running at them and trying to zerg them who aren't organized. Yeah. Um, but obviously you've got to be pretty organized to get everyone within a certain region and keeping each other alive. Yeah, I mean, but... think about this way, the amount of, as, ma- as smart as some MMO players are, there's always that one douchebag that will mess yeah, it all up. but I think any AoE should be strong enough that it would be worthwhile against a medium uh, to large size group instead of single targeting. Yeah, precisely, precisely. And I mean, one thing that I'd actually like to see is a sort of an, even an AoE heal, like a big AoE heal that would actually help your own allies that are in there fighting, you know? Like if you've got yeah. one Dragonite in there and six or seven other people come in, you want to be able to heal that dude up and then another dude will come in and you kind of go, oh no, who will I heal? And then you throw in that AoE heal to help yeah, up. So, so it's not all offensive, you've got to work well, on the Well, I don't think an AoE should be really worthwhile on any group, like less than four, really. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, don't I know think what you mean, man. More exactly. damage in a single target. Um, but, I, like you said, um, I hope AoEs yeah. will actually be able to do some damage and kind of make someone think, okay, maybe I should step out of this. Yeah, I mean, you kind of want to be able to go, oh, oh this dude just casted beep. Yeah, yeah you want to have that's that another sense of... thing. In real time fighting, you kind of have to keep an eye on what's in front of you, what's behind you, and what's above you, because they might be raining down something on you. Exactly. And dodging out of them and things like that. So. So that's yeah. um, everything this week, right? Um, there was one other question. Uh, do uh, you want to go over it? You can't. Oh no, that was that was very similar to the AOE question. It's all about will organized smaller groups be able to take out. Yeah larger groups and that's all to depend on how organized they are and whether you've got because if there's a group of let's say eight dps dps because they say there's no triangle but well, there's always a triangle mm-hmm. um coming at you um but you've got five people but you've got a healer um a tank and three dps or just two healers and three dps who are going to keep each other up 
while you take them out, that should always be possible. Exactly. exactly. Um, so, um, so I guess that's where organization comes in. Yeah, that's uh, that's all of the actual weekly news that we have. So, uh, do you want to say anything before we actually call the video? Um, well, basically, yeah, like I said, the um, best thing for you to do is to actually look at these keeps because there's only so much we can describe and pictures are a thousand words or what not, who yeah. everyone says. Um, we've got a giveaway to do. We've got a giveaway to do. So, guys, if you're watching this on the channel, you got to make sure you're at twitch.tv slash Stratix. As always, thanks very much for watching. My name is Spartan Chris. That's Wait. been Spartan Dan. And we'll see you in the next video.